Thank you, excellent God. Thank you, excellent God. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty 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 name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Father. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, glorious God. Thank you, excellent God. Thank you, excellent God. Thank you, excellent God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we bless you today. We glorify you, excellent God. In the name of Jesus. Celebrate you. We celebrate you. We celebrate you. In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, wonderful Savior. Hallelujah, wonderful Savior. Hallelujah, wonderful Savior. Hallelujah, wonderful Savior. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, great glorious Father, we bless you. We glorify you. There's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. That the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess. You are Lord, to the glory and to the honor of God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, excellent God. Thank you, thank you, marvelous Savior. For all the great, glorious things you are doing. In the name of Jesus, how you're working them out for us. You're working them in our favor. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, excellent God. Thank you for this time. Thank you for saving us, bringing us out of the darkness into your marvelous light. Thank you, excellent Savior. We love you. We bless you. We praise you. Yes, God. Yes, excellent God. Yes, excellent God. Yes, marvelous Savior. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Wonderful Savior. Wonderful Savior. Wonderful Savior. In the name of the Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Jesus. 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 Oh, we bless you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Oh, excellent God. Oh, excellent God. There's none like you nowhere. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for Catherine Brown and Shirley Kennedy. I thank you for these precious hearts. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for them. I thank you for how you placed them in our lives. Thank you, Father. Thank you, excellent God. Father, lead us and guide us today in the way that you have us go. We do not take this time for granted. You've blessed us to be here, and we are grateful to you, Lord. We're grateful to you for this opportunity. In the name of Jesus, let your will be done. Let your glory be revealed. Let your mystery be made known. Hallelujah. Thank you, excellent God. Thank you, marvelous Savior. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. We look to you today. We look to you, excellent Father. We look to you, excellent Savior. For everything you're doing, it is indeed marvelous in our eyes. Yes, Savior. Yes. Yes, Jesus. Yes. 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 Yes, yes to salvation, yes to healing, yes to deliverance, yes to breakthrough, yes to eyes open, yes to deaf ears unstopped, yes God, yes God, yes God, yes, yes, yes we're your servants, yes we're your children, sheep of your pasture, in the name of Jesus, we're all yours, we're all yours, we're all yours, Father we're all yours. In the name of Jesus, we're all yours. We're all yours, Lord. We're all yours. 
Thank you, Father, for Pastor Deborah. Thank you, Father, for Woman of God, Minister Harris. Thank you, Father. Thank you, excellent God, for all that you are doing. Father, thank you for allowing us to align our faith together. Thank you, Father. Thank you for partnering us, partnering, partnering us in the realm of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. And without you, we are nothing. In the name of Jesus. I thank you for this moment. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for your saving grace. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Show yourself strong here. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you, excellent God. Father, show yourself strong here as we collaborate in the spirit, as we connect, as we move forward, as we plan and strategize to defeat the enemy. Father, let there be a great coming together in the name of Jesus. Father, touch us with wisdom, knowledge, revelation or knowledge in the name of Jesus. These that are with us today, Father, that we'll have the same goal, same passion, same idea. Oh God, that we would, oh God, strategize of winning souls. Strategize on bringing men out of the darkness into your marvelous light. Father, calls us to network together and pool our resources, whatever it's going to take to get the job done. That old oh, eyes will come open. Blind eyes will come open. Deaf ears will come unstopped. The lame will walk, the dumb will talk, to teach and preach your word, to make your word clear, profound in this season, in the name of Jesus, for your word will work by itself. But Father, thank you for giving us men and women that would carry this gospel, men and women that would preach like they've never preached and declare the word of the Lord. Father, we thank you for what you're doing, even right now, that souls must be healed, saved, delivered, Oh God, that you would give them breakthrough. And I bless your name for it. I bless you for what you're doing. In the name of Jesus, for calling us out of the darkness into your marvelous light. We surrender to you. We surrender this day to you, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus. You're the God that loves us. You're the God that cares for us. And we appreciate your love. Father, let there be healing today. On this line. Let somebody come to you knowing that you are their Savior and their Lord. In the name of Jesus, Father, let this word go forth like a hammer that would break rocks in pieces. Let righteousness run down like a mighty stream. Let the weak say I'm strong. The blind say I can see. The deaf says I can hear. In the name of Jesus, let your name be glorified and let the devil be terrified. And we give you praise. We bless you for it. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, excellent God. Hallelujah. God blessings to all of you, the Lord's people. It's good seeing you here at this hour one more again. God's blessing to you, uh, woman of God, Minister Harris. God's blessing to you, Pastor Deborah Cooper. Uh, Catherine Brown, God's blessings to you. Stephanie Bush, woman of God, God blessings to you. Amen. And everyone else who are with us today, uh -huh, the line, uh, yeah, on the line, Shirley Kennedy, the Lord blessings to you. In the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah, amen. And all of you, amen, who are making yourself visible, I thank God that I'm able to see you and connect with you in the realm of the spirit, amen. Father, let these, oh God, go before you as shining stars in the earth realm. Oh God, cause whatever they're doing for you to shine, let it be great. Let it be great. Let it be great. You said that they shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters who bringeth forth his fruit in his seasons. His leaves shall not wither, and whatsoever they doeth, it shall prosper. In the name of Jesus. I see you, woman of God. Stephanie Bush says, at work listening. And may the Lord bless you there where you are and open great doors, great, great doors. In the name of Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> so once, one more again, it is good for us to be here. Good for us to be able to share, amen, the gospel of Jesus Christ again. Amen. In the hearing of all of you, and we're trusting that, amen, the Lord would do marvelous things in your own unique ministries. As you have uh, spent time with me, praying for me, pushing me, and you, you got this, you're going to do it, and encouraging me. I want you to know that we appreciate you. 
the work that you're doing. Amen. May Jesus be praised. May you continue to do the work of the Lord. Hallelujah. Nothing stand in your way. Hallelujah. That you operate in wisdom, knowing, hallelujah, that you got this. You got this. You, each one of you, you got this. And we should always come apart, amen, with something and asking God to brand it for us. Brand it. Father, let it be a brand. Brand it for us. We know not what to do. We know not how to do it. But we want you to put your personal stamp on it and brand it as we give glory to you for this ministry. And we give glory to you for this work. Father, you put your final approval on it. Amen. We're going to look at our lesson today. Um, today we want to talk about assisting the work of the Lord began with assisting his servants. Assisting the work of the Lord began with assisting his servants. Assisting the work of the Lord. And I'm saying that because there are people who feel that they can give it directly to God. How do you give it directly to God? Did you just call him down and he comes out of the heaven and, and get it from you while you're laying down, go in your wallet, go in your bank account and, and, and get what you have for him? God doesn't move that way. God is not going to rob you or take from you. He wants you to give it to him. And God have a divine system set in place. And when you follow the protocol that is set in place, then you give unto that system you're giving unto God. If God have Stephanie Bush in place to uh, uh, have the foresight or the oversight of a ministry, Pastor Cooper, uh, 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 Minister Harris, or uh, whoever, and the Lord is utilizing them to get his word, get his message out to the people. He said, cry loud and spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Show my people their transgressions, the house of Jacob, their sins. And then you want the word to go forth. And sometimes it's, it's like we're waiting. We said, well, we're going to wait for the men to go and carry this work. They got the, we're going to wait for the men. So you set back. If sisters set back, if the sisters would have set back, I, I know. What would have come? What would have become of the gospel? What would have become of the work of the Lord if the sisters would have set back? If the sisters would have set back, there would be no me and perhaps no you. The, 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 the preachers, the, the, the true born again men and women of God, um, the true born men of God, I would believe would be fewer and few, very slim, almost to none. Somebody said that this gospel got to go forth. And thank you for the eagerness of our sisters. Thank you for the hunger. Thank you for your desire to be an excellent help me to yeah the priest in your home that is to carry the gospel perhaps he wasn't able to do it as articulate as swift with wisdom fortitude as you uh huh maybe just perhaps he was a little slow out the door but because of your prayer and your perseverance and asking God, Lord, Lord, help, 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 help my home, help my home, my son, my baby, my daughter, my husband, my, yeah, yeah, Lord, help, send help here. And that's what we're to do. And that's one of the things that happens when you look back at the story of Jake, uh, of, of David sending his men. This is not the lesson, but we're getting there. When David sending his men out, they were fighting. They are now hungry. And see if you can find some victuals, some food for us. And they come across this fool. And they're not knowing that this is who he is, a fool. They entreat the man with kindness, show him hospitality. And will you help us? And they let them know who they were. These are our credentials. We are not some aloof people. We're, we're not uh, gallivanting all over the, the place. But no, we come from David. The Lord of the hand of the Lord is with David. The hand of the Lord is with David to care for his people. And he railed on them. <laughs> Am I supposed to just help anybody just because they say that they're with David or just because they're this and that? He railed on them. Tried to bring shame upon these men. 
yeah, yeah, to really, really show a nasty side of who he were to these men. And they turned, they went home. Went home, I didn't, well, I said home, but not home, but went back to the camp of where David was. When they revealed everything to David, it made him hostile, made him angry to see how the enemy, because now he's the enemy. He wasn't the enemy. They didn't go to the enemy's camp looking for help. They went to the friendly, their own people looking for help. And to have this done to you, it angered David. He put on his sword, getting ready to go fight. But somebody took the message to Bathsheba. <laughs> told her what happened, told her what happened. She gave them command, told them what to do. They loaded up a, a, a wagon, loaded down with food, not government food, but food, good food. And she was on her way. Got to the man of God, told him to load it down, let's go. And went and found David. Light it down off of her beast of burden and fell herself to the ground uh, to do obeisance to him and begin to intercede for her family. A uh, help me. I'm telling you, people don't want to look at help me like this, uh, Pastor Deborah. They, they don't want to see the help me like this in this light, uh -huh, Stephen Hanks, because there are some help meets that are married to some good people, but then there are some helpers, help meets that are married to some fools and about to get their whole house destroyed because of who they're connected with. But this woman of God fell down, recognized greatness, fell in the presence of greatness and interceded for her family. <laughs> wow. You know the rest of the story. You know what David did. We all know what happened. But David was so heated that if this, if you would have not come here, that no, there would not have been one son, one so one person left that would piss against the ground. No, nobody. I'm getting ready to to deal with all of them. Look how this intercessor. Look at how this helped me interceded for our family. And these are the things that we need to happen while we are gallivanting with trying to get shoes and eyeglasses and mascara and I'm not hating on your women. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. I'm not hating on your weaves. I'm not hating on your lashes. I'm not hating on your shoes. I'm not hating on you. All I'm saying is there's some time we just need to really, really, really put our priorities in the right place. This woman of God put her priorities in the right place and was not scorning, was not uh, railing on her husband, just telling it like it is. And she had no evil intent for her husband, but uh, evidently the Lord saw fit to just move him out the way. She didn't see fit to do it. The Lord saw fit. And so destiny helper, this woman of God submitting to God. And I'm saying all of this because in the dispensation that we're in now, you got people railing on our women, railing on them, Jennifer Harris, you're not authorized to preach. Who gave you authorization to preach? Catherine Boone, uh, Brown, who gave you authorization to preach? Stephanie Bush, who? <laughs> oh, geez, that's an old conversation. Stephen Hanks, that's an old conversation people were having and railing on them. But had they not gone, had they not shared this gospel, had they not preached, in the midst of hostility, had they not preached uh -huh, and told the good story like it was, my God, many of us would not have been here. Thank you for your labor, women of God. Thank you for your labor. And you can preach and teach and go forth in Lord and don't have to rail on nobody. And yet, performing your duties just like Deborah did, who was married to Lapidoth. And perform all of your duties. Uh, and and I'm, I'm, I don't want it to seem like it's just a duty. You got to raise babies and just, you know, just stay in the house. No, no, that's not what I'm saying. But you're doing things. Oftentimes we want to bypass our obligations. We want to bypass 
what we were called to do, bypass our purpose and get directly to God. You don't bypass purpose and get to God. No, you don't bypass that avenue and then just go directly to God. You go to God by doing what you're supposed to do. When I make contact, when I am in his presence, I've got to do it by doing what I'm supposed to do. Not deviating from my call, not deviating from my purpose, but doing what I was told to do by God. That's what pledges him. Being an obedient son, being an obedient daughter unto the Lord. Assisting the work of the Lord begins with assisting his servants. The Lord has given us helpmates to help us and to help we will allow them you all to help us help us sisters help us help us help us help us brothers help us give us your assistance and help us <laughs> Jesus oh my I'm, I'm, I'm looking because I'm laughing because of so many avenues so many messages that are enveloping from this right here Assisting the work of the Lord began with assisting his servants. And the Lord has called, gave us sisters, put sisters in our life to assist us. Amen. To assist us. It's lesson number nine. And, and I know I've deviated to set that in place, put that in place right there. We may deal with it a little later. And that's all I'm going to say about that for right now. Uh, we expect your life to change for better forever. You must expect the same. Today we have three subtopics that was going to accompany assisting the work of the Lord began with assisting his servants. Three subtopics. Subtopic number one, there is a divine protocol that should be associated with your liberality. There is a divine protocol that should be associated with your liberality. Uh, 1 Corinthians 16, 1 through 8. And second protocol, when a great door opens for you, it is not without many adversaries. When a great door opens for you, uh-huh, when it opens for you, it is not without many adversaries. And thirdly, being blessed by destiny helpers are more than you can ever imagine. That's a good help. Being blessed by destiny helpers are more than you can ever imagine. Thank you, Father, for destiny helpers. Thank you, Father, for good destiny helpers. Thank you, Father, for solid helpers, solid people, solid saints, solid, 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 <laughs> solid. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. There's a divine protocol that should be associated with your liberality. The lesson began, now concerning the collection for the saints. Now concerning the collection for the saints. As I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Paul is speaking about the collection of the saints. It put him in a good place of authority. He is a man of authority. He is a uh, Pharisee of the Pharisees. He is that. Uh huh. He, he he know what to deal with concerning the Sadducee. He's not a Sadducee because a Sadducee believe there's no resurrection. They don't believe in angels. Paul does not classify himself as a Sadducee. Pharisee. He's a Pharisee of the Pharisee, but also a very devout Jew, a very devout person. Uh, that loves God with all of his heart. And one reason why he pursued after the, the Christians and railed on them the way he did when he was called Saul is because he thought they were going against God. But now that he illuminated, realized that God have a son uh, and that, uh, that, that, that we are sons of God as well, but that God have a, a significant son, a son that's going to bring salvation to us and bring us out of dilemma and, and, and points us to father. Uh, Paul didn't know this. And so now that the Lord has used him and called him to 
the ministry, not only the ministry, but made him an apostle, gave him the right to go forth. One who is capable of learn, uh, teaching, who teaching and he leading by example. And apostles should be ready, able to lead by examples, teaching the word of God uh -huh, and where he see fit to set things in order, set things in order. And that's what Paul is doing here. He's setting things in order. So that's what give him the authorization, Brother Stephen Hanks, to set things in order. So now concerning the collection for the saints, Jesus didn't talk about this. But Paul is talking about it because he's a man of order first. And we need to capitalize on that. We need to look at Paul's history and look at how he walked among the Jews and how he walked as being a Pharisee of the Pharisee. People who love to put rules in place. But Paul have good protocol. And he's dealing, that's what he's dealing now to establish protocol. Now concerning the collection for the saints. As I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, given this is being established right now, upon the first day of the week, not any time, upon the first day of the week, not in the middle of the week, upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered him. Prospered him. Yes, yes, God can prosper you in the spirit. Yes, he can prosper you in love and faith and meekness and temperance and in, 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 um, in, in, uh, hospitality and etc. God can prosper you in these areas. But that's not what Paul is saying. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store. This is something physical, something tangible. Let him lay by him in store as God has prospered him. So Paul is speaking here in the physical arena, in the natural arena, in the secular arena. Uh -huh. That there be no gathering when I come. Don't wait till the last minute. Don't wait, wait till the last minute. So what Paul is saying, if you know I'm coming, don't wait till I get there to bless me. <laughs> Don't wait, don't wait, don't. You don't have to wait until I get there. And then when I get there, then you start preparing to be a blessing to me. You know I'm coming? Set things in order now. Prepare things now. You know I'm coming. Prepare your heart to bless me now. You know I'm coming. You know I'm doing the work of the Lord. I'm doing the work of the Lord. I'm coming to you. And so when I get there, don't. Right there. Right there. That there be no gathering when I come. You don't have to do all that when I get there. No, you don't have to do all that. You had to beg a hundred people. You had to beg five people. You had to beg ten people. No, I'd rather not even see that. <laughs> I'd rather not see who you're begging. I, I need not hear that you're begging. Because first and foremost, you are children of the Most High God. The cattle on a thousand hills belong to him. You have no right uh, to be in bondage. You have no right to grumble and be in bondage and look like you, you just can't make it. Your, 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 your lip poked out. Your eyes are failing. And you don't know where your next meal coming from. Well, I hear in my spirit right now as I speak this, and let me just say it right. Father, help me. Please help me. Please help me, Father, to be transparent here. I have not always been there. I have not always been there. I'm talking since saved, since salvation, since uh, embracing the Lord in my life. I've not always been there. There have been some times I've been on boards and broken pieces. I'll say that again. There have been times, Brother Hanks, I've been on some boards and broken pieces. And I've remained on boards and broken pieces for a long time. Yeah. Somebody gave a testimony about how they were going to a meeting and the people didn't know how many times they had to jumpstart the car to get to the meeting. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't know how many times, don't know how many times trying to get to a meeting, running out of gas, trying to get to a meeting, no, no heat in the vehicle, trying to get to a meeting. Y'all don't hear me. Car backfiring, trying to get to a meeting. 
What does that say? Does it speak only to determination? No, it does not speak only to determination. It does not speak only to determination. Being determined, I see your determination, yes. But I see also how unlearned we are when it comes to being a good steward. We have a, 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 a man that got overseer, Timmy Brown, broke that thing down to its lowest common denominator the other day on our uh, teaching line it's at 9 a.m. Uh, Monday through Saturdays, 9 a.m. on our um, lifeline. Yes, it's a lifeline. And there it is. We put it on the stream, uh, 508-924-1482. We're on there every day with the exception of Sunday. We're on there. But um, we're there on the Eastern time, 9 a.m. Eastern time, 9 a.m. Eastern time. We even have 5.30 a.m. prayer. 5 a.m. and 11.30. You're doing the 11th, uh, the 5.30 p.m. now. This is the 5.30 p.m. And we're having teaching. 5.30 p.m. we're having the teaching. But then 11.30 a.m. and p.m. Uh, and a 9 a.m. Bible study. We said Monday through Friday, but it's actually Monday through Saturday. Uh -huh. So we're on there. And, and this overseer, overseer Timmy Brown, began to break down stewardship to its lowest common denominator. And we praise God for the man of God teaching that. Amen. And the Lord want us to be not only good steward uh -huh, of our money, but good stewards of our lives, good stewards of, of, of our hygiene, good stewards of everything around us. And, and, and this good stewardship will keep us out of bondage. It keeps us out of uh, a place of being broken. It keeps us out of that. And we have to hear, we have to listen and follow through with the Lord. So what Paul is speaking here, he's dealing with a protocol. Learning and being taught, it builds a certain way how to do a thing. And this is what we're doing here. This is not about sinning. This lesson here is not about sinning. This lesson here is about a protocol. This lesson here has to do with how to do a certain thing. Yes. This all of this right here has how to do a certain thing to make it most effective. How to conduct yourselves. Don't wait till the last moment to do it. But how to do it effectively. How to make it look good while you're doing it. How so uh, uh, so you won't be a castaway or pushed down. You know, you won't turn people off when you're doing it. You've seen it happen. You've seen people do an offering. Is the offering bad? Offerings are not bad. But then, if you don't do it right, it makes it, it makes people cringe. When you're going to give God a a 30 minute sermon, but it took you an hour and a half to raise an offering, it makes people cringe. That's that's unprofessional, and not only is it unprofessional, it, it, it speaks to our learning. It speaks to where we are. And we're going to have to really do better in those areas. And, and, and it's a protocol. It's a way to do it. It's an effective way to do it. God wants there to be meat in this house. He don't want you to wait till the lights are off. He don't want you until you, he don't want to wait until you are, you, you're being threatened for the gas people to turn the gas off, change the lock, the rent's not paid, the mortgage not taken care of. Uh, 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 yeah, you know, you don't want to wait until those things happen. But you want to become proactive. You want to do things together. And Paul says uh, that there will be no gathering when I come. Don't wait until I come, then you raise an offer. Don't wait till I come. Now, I'm, for the old persons, I don't need you changing on me right now. I don't need you switching, but I'm giving you the lesson. Paul is saying there's more to this. There's a professionalism about this. There's a way to go about doing this. Uh huh. And, and let me say this This has nothing to do about offering But I want to use offering I want to use Thank you woman of God Woman says Christian ethics I want to say something about offerings I want to say something This, is, this lesson is not about that But I want to use this in the lesson uh, I've been to some places I, yeah, I went and I've checked out some services And uh, uh, some services that made me cringe How they took a long time In doing the offering And there was um uh, Pastor, there was so many different offerings. There was a, 
one offering for one thing. Then there was a a, a general offering. Then there was a, um, a benevolent offering. Then there was a speaker's offering. Then there was uh, some other a pew rally offering. <laughs> I'm like, man, I'm sitting there and the service is going on for upward. I don't know. It's pushing. It's pushing. It's pushing a good 45 minutes. It's pushing that. And uh, they're still begging. And they're still begging. And I'm sitting there. I'm really, yeah, feeling some kind of embarrassed. Because it's no longer about praising God. It's no longer about worshiping. It's no longer about the message. But it's taken away from everything now. And then the message that night, it, it was like 30 minutes. It wasn't even a long message. But the offering took longer. It was bothering me. And I'm wondering, am I in the right place? I'm wondering, and, and, and how did I get here? But then... I needed to see that, and I need y'all to hear me. I needed to see that as a young preacher. I needed to see that in its totality. I need to see everything. Why? Because in seeing that, I'm talking to the Lord. Lord, don't ever let me get to this place. Teach me professionalism. Teach me, teach me how to conduct these affairs. Yes, we will have deacons. Yes, we will have people and deaconesses and, and people who would assist in this, but teach me how to do this all right, teach me how to do it. I don't know everything, but I do want to know the right thing to do when pertaining to what you will have me to do. And I believe that there's an excellence that I'm looking for, but there's a different excellence that the woman of God, Pastor Deborah Cooper, is walking in. She walks in an excellence that is tailored for her. Stephen Hanks walks in an ex excellence that is tailored to him. Catherine Brown walks in an excellence that's tailored to her. Jennifer Harris is a another breed. She walks in an excellence that is tailored for her. And we have to remain within that excellence. Don't try to jump out of your excellence and jump in my excellence. Now, but excellence seeks excellence. And you walk in that. And so here I'm looking for this thing and I'm, and I'm like, Lord, just please give me protocol. Please teach me a more excellent way. And then in, in asking God to do that, he did tell me that there's a more excellent way to do it. Even if I want to cover all those bases, if I want to cover all those bases, and that's fine if I want to, if I want to. And then he shows me how I can take a receipt, I can take a piece of paper, and on the paper have different things that I want. And, and, and a general fund, tithing, uh, this and that and this and that, whatever. And then as a, you pass the thing, have the people to grab one and check on whatever they want to and then delegate the fundings to each one if they want to or just have a general funding and just put what you want in the general funding and and move out the way swift after you do the general offering then have your administrators have your financial administrators delegate do the breakdown and no and, and then you've done what you needed to do you have uh, separated and so much to the home and foreign mission, so much to ministry, so much to this, so much to that. And, and uh, after you've delegated the finances in its proper stage, uh, you've moved forward. You've moved forward and nothing is lacking. It didn't take you that long. Now, I'm, I'm just saying, I've seen it work too many times. I've seen that level of excellence and I thank God for it. Have everybody made it there? Everybody have not made it to that place. Amen. Blessings to you, woman of God. Blessings to you. We're so delighted that you're with us. Uh, Rena White, woman of God, we love you. We thank God for you. But uh, there are some who struggled with that. Thank God that the Lord has given me uh, knowledge and I've asked him. But there are others who don't know to ask him. And then they, and you struggle with it. And so I just want to say, Paul is saying, uh -huh, upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God has purposed him that there be no gathering when I come. And when I come, whomsoever ye shall approve by your letters, them will I send to bring your liberality unto Jerusalem. It's okay. See, Paul's on this. He's on the stage to listen. Listen, we're going to get this thing established right. I'm not going to, don't just send me anybody. I'm not going to send anybody to you, but the person that's approved by your letters, that's right, there's a letter, and send your letter and let me know this person is authorized to send your liberality. 
You can't have everybody handling the work of the Lord. You can't have everybody taking care of the sac a, a sacred things, the sacred things of God. Everybody don't know how to handle it. And what God loves uh -huh, is a certain protocol, certain excellence. You don't just throw things at God. If you do, ask Cain about that. You want to have that conversation with Cain. Cain want to just give God anything. You don't give God anything. You want to take time and give it to him right. And uh, uh, Abel gave God a precious offering. That's why God was pleased with it. He took time with it. He, he had to go through and find the right one. He didn't just throw that thing together. And when you lay aside what you're going to give to God, that's right, you lay it aside, you set it aside, and you do it right. That's what Paul's saying. You don't just do anything. You don't just come to God anyway. You don't just give to God any kind of way. You just don't speak to God on any kind of way. Now let me go back. There's a protocol in the kingdom. There's a protocol in the kingdom and you'll see it operating in the earthly kingdom first because we see things in the earth realm. But that same protocol that you see in the earth realm is also a pattern of what's happening in the heavenly system, in the heavenly kingdom. One of David's sons wanted to have a, a feast, a party. David's sons, he had a lot of sons. And, and, and David's children wanted to throw a feast. But did you know that they could not even throw a feast without coming to the father and asking their father permission because he's king. Father, would you allow these sons, these other sons, my brothers, to come to the feast? And in one occasion, David said, why you want him to come? Why you want this one to come? I want him to come and so that he could, uh, whatever, whatever the lie was, they wanted him to come. And David gave authorization. So in the, in, in the case, in, in, on several occasions, they wanted him to come. On one occasion, they came and they didn't even ask for Solomon to come. That's another story. They didn't ask for Solomon to come, but they had to ask for the sons to come to the feast that they was having. Why am I putting this in here? Did you not know you just you just cannot come to God any kind of way? I, I know God have blessed many of you with power and authority and anointed, but you cannot wield your anointing on anybody just because you're anointed. You just cannot do faith because you just want to do it. You just cannot come to God because you want to come. There's a protocol. There's a way you do it. Go back and talk to Moses. When Moses was concerned about the children of God. He wanted God to visit his children. And God says, listen, now if I come down, they got down. No, I'm not coming in the kind of way. All right, sanctify the people. I'll come, but sanctify the people. And don't let not one of them touch the foot of the mountain. Put a barrier around the mountain. And when I come, if anything touch it, then I'll break through and, and I'll slew them. Yeah. This is, hold up, hold up, God. What you gonna do that's right, you heard me. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying you heard me. But anyway, God would kill them. There's a protocol to approaching God. And you don't approach God in your flesh. You don't approach God in disobedience. You don't approach God in neglect. You don't approach God just doing whatever you want to do because you want to do it. And the woman of God says something in our other, we had a, uh, again, you heard me talk about our teaching, our Bible study on the lifeline. And the woman of God that was on there today says something unique about Elijah. Elijah. Elijah was sent to Ahab. But when he went to Ahab, he did what he was supposed to do. But Ahab told Jezebel, I mean, Ahab told Jezebel what Ahab did. And Elijah ran and hid in the, in, in the cave. Why? Why? God did not tell Elijah to deal with Jezebel, a, a, a supreme witch, high, the highest in her authority. God did not tell him to deal with her. And so he went to a cave. He didn't have authorization from God yet. He had authorization to deal with the king, but he did not have authorization to deal with uh, that queen. People need to understand that when you're walking with God, follow protocol. But hold up, this is Elijah. He called fire from it. Yeah, this is Elijah. This is Elijah. This is the man of God that, yeah, he, he speaks to kings. Yes. But he's not doing what he want to do. 
He's not going at his own will to say what he want to say, however he want to do it, except he have permission. He have permission to deal with Ahab, but he doesn't have permission to deal with, with Jezebel. Mm. Yeah, you'll catch that later for those persons who feel that you can just do whatever you want to do with your authority, with your power. No. Elijah knows that. God did not give him that authorization as of yet. And then when, when God did tell him what to do, then Ahab, Elijah said that, yes, right, the dog would eat of her bones. The dog would deal with her. I'm not even going to deal with The dog would deal with her. That's not the lesson. But to move forward, we'll deal with that another day. Amen. Just to throw that there. You don't just do what you want to because you're anointed. You don't just go where you want to go because you're anointed. You don't just say what you want to say because you're anointed. I'm called fire from God down on you. Are you authorized by God? Did God tell you to do it? Did he tell you to do it? Now, if you know that he told you to do it, then that's fine. Do what he told you to do. Do what he told you to do. But you don't just do anything. And it starts right here with servanthood. It starts right here with being a, a, a servant of the Most High God. Following protocol. That there be no gathering when I come. And when I come, whatsoever you shall approve by your letters. By your letters. Stewardship. Doing the right thing the right way. Whomsoever you shall approve by your letters. Them will I send to bring your liberality to, unto Jerusalem. And if it be meet that I go also... They shall go with me. If I have to come, then I'll bring them with me. Now I will come unto you when I pass, when I shall pass through Macedonia. Paul is saying, Now I will come to you when I shall pass through Macedonia. For I do pass through Macedonia. And it may be that I will abide. It might be. You see, he's not saying, I'm going to abide. I'm going to stay there. Notice what he said. There's a possibility, a strong possibility. And it may be that I may abide, yea, and winter with you, that ye may bring me on my journey, whithersoever I go. For I will not see you now by the way, but I trust to tarry a while with you, if the Lord permit. When was the last time we've said that, if the Lord permit? If the Lord will allow it. If it's the Lord's will. We've gotten away from that. But we need to get back to them, just like Paul. Paul is a mighty man of God, but notice what he, he's not too quick to so affirm everything. He's not too quick to say, I give you my word on tomorrow by this time I will be there. Are you that sure you're going to be here tomorrow? You know you're going to be here tomorrow by this time? Are you know that? Did the Lord tell you to say that? Because now when you're speaking about tomorrow, it might, you might be going into prophet, uh, a prophetic saying. Are you prophesying? This time tomorrow, I'm going to be there. I will show you I, I'm, I'm going to be there. I promise you I'm going to be there. Are you sure? You, you have that headwind. You have that headline. Did God tell you that? That if God told you, who am I to go against God? But notice what he said. And it may be that I will abide, yea, and winter with you, that ye may bring me on my journey, whithersoever I go. It's, Paul is basically saying, I want to do this, and it may be that I will abide with you. Uh -huh. For I will not see you now, by the way, but I trust to tarry a little with you. I trust. I trust. I, I like using that word. I trust to tarry with you, uh, uh, tarry a while with you, if the Lord permit. Watch out for those persons who want you to give them a definite answer right now. Right now. This is where it's going to go out. You're so sure. If you're so sure because God has given you that, then by all means, follow the Lord. But if you're not that sure, if the Lord will permit. The sons of God did not come and fellowship one another unless they had their father permission. You got to get father permission. Ask, 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 ask F, F, Absalom, I'm sorry. Ask Absalom, I was trying to get his name. Ask Absalom. He wanted his brothers to come, but he had to get David's permission. You've got to go through Father to get permission. You want to build a house, you want to start a church, you want to, you, you want to witness, you want to go forth, you want blind eyes open, get Father's permission. 
Father, I would love to. Father, today's a good day today. Would you, would you please send me on my way and would you allow me, Father, to witness to at least 10 souls, 10 souls. Please, Father, open that avenue. Give me, give me advance, advance my way, oh God. Cause me to connect with at least 10 people today to share your goodness, to share my testimony of how I met you, how you've met me, how you saved me, transformed me, changed my life. And as you place it to him, let him do what he do. Let him do it. Let him lead you. Let him prompt you. Because now that you've spoken with him, you're waiting for his green light, him to lead you and guide you which way to go. You don't just do it on your own. You don't just go because you feel, oh, it's a good day today, I'm going. Paul said, but I will tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost. Now that's something that's been his desire, he know. See, now Paul can speak on this because God had already told Paul that you're going to go to uh, Jerusalem. You're going to go there. I will, I will. I have a word for you. And that word, you've got to get there. I'm going to use you in Jerusalem. So Paul know that he's got to get there. It's not in this lesson here, it's in another lesson. But Paul know that's his ultimate stop. Just like Jesus knew, he had to get to Jerusalem. But prior to him getting to Jerusalem, people wanted him to get there. But he says, no, my time is not yet. Why are you trying to get me to go to Jerusalem? <laughs> my time is not yet. There are people who want you to come to Jerusalem, but it's not your time yet. See, Jesus knew what Jerusalem meant to him. Do you know what Jerusalem means to you? Do you know what Mississippi means to you? Do you know what the ultimate means to you? Do you know what the next stage means to you? Do you know? Are you, have you been enlightened to what that means? Oh, this is a time to praise God. You can praise God right where you are. You can praise God right in your home. Sit in there at your vest, at your, in your vestibule. You can praise him right there. But the, great, uh, the, the call is greater. The moment is greater. The timing is greater. The move is greater. The opportunity is greater. How do you know it's greater? How do you know this moment for you is greater? How do you know uh -huh, uh, 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 18 March is greater? How do you know that's greater? Well, the date didn't just come from nowhere. It just didn't, bing, there's a date, I got it. But that date had to come with much prayer. And now that this prayer, the prayer is, Father, give us this date. Give us these dates. Give us 18, 19, and 20 March. And on these dates, God, these are our desires. We, write the vision and make it plain. These are our desires. These are things we would like to see happen. Father, will you allow us to go forth? Will you bless this gathering? Will you save in this gathering? When we come, will you allow us to get to Mississippi? And when we get there, Father, will you set the stage for us? Will you saturate the place with your glory? Will you heal? Will you open blind eyes? Unstop their fears? Cast out devils? Father, this is your moment. I know we have programs in place. There are some physical things we would like to see happen. Step by step by step by step by step. But if you don't come, we're not going to do all that. And when you show up, we still might not do all that. <laughs> still might not do all that. Why? Because it's in your hands, Father. But we don't want to come empty. The programs are just basically saying we're not coming empty. The programs are just basically saying, Father, yes, we have an agenda, but it will not pass if you do not put your approval on it. Will you permit this to happen? Father, will you permit eyes to come open? Will you permit souls to be saved? Will you permit us to learn these things here? Will you permit these things to take place? Will you heal? Will you deliver, Father? Heal, deliver. Give us, give us the grace to go forth. Give us saving grace to move forward. Be it a large number or small number. Whatever you do, it's a move by you. This is not our move. This is your move, Father. And when you speak to him, he's going to do it because he doesn't need a crowd. A crowd would be better, yeah, but he doesn't have to. God's a God that moves in silence as well as crowds. God moves however he want to move. And we have to know that. 
we move by his spirit. When a great door opens for you, it is not without many adversaries. When a great door opens for you, it is not without many adversaries. And, and, and here, here it is. It's in the lesson. It's in the lesson. Paul says, For a great door and effectual is open unto me. This is an effective door. This Mississippi is an effective work. And I want you to hear me. I, I, I wish everybody who are here listening right now would just, would just book your move. Book a move. Book a move. Book your move. And, and woman of God, uh, uh, Margaret Temple Brown, just show them how they can book a move. Put something in there and tell them how they can book a move to uh, 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 Mississippi. And I wish you would book a move to there. I'm not talking about moving that, moving your house and your land and stocks and barter. No, 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 no. I'm talking about, I said March the 18th, 19th, and 20th. For a great door and effectual is open unto me. And I need you to look at this. If this is not spiritual, if this is not hitting home, uh-huh, look at it. For a great door and effectual is open unto me and there are many adversaries. Oh, there are many adversaries. Don't ever think that the closing of these doors was just for fun. Don't ever think uh, that these doors, huh, uh -huh, this right here just came about just because. No, baby. Mm -mm. It didn't just, the demonic that came into that man, one man having over 2,000 plus demons in him was not just to kill him. They tried to kill him, but they couldn't kill him. You got 2,000 demons can't kill you? Trying to make you go crazy? If that's not schizophrenic, that's schizophrenic plus 2,000 times. And this meant that he could not die. He was a man of purpose. And it took Jesus to break the shackles off of him. It took Jesus to destroy the shackles off of him. And then the man said, well, let me go with you. Jesus said, no, don't go with me. But go back to your friends, your family. Go back to where you've come from. And you tell the story there. Why? Because look where he came from. He came from a place called Decapolis. Decapolis was calling him. Decapolis needed him. Decapolis was about to go crazy. Decapolis was about to go down. Decapolis was about to die. And the demons tried to keep this man from Decapolis. What is Decapolis? Decapolis means 10 cities. There are 10 cities waiting. And those demons tried to keep this man from, the, from his destiny. If that's not evangelism in his finest, 10 cities. <laughs> and they put it, the demons put the man in the grave, put the man in the cemetery, put the man where they buried dead people. Got him crying and yelling and screaming and cutting himself. Every time he's cutting himself, he's trying to die. Violent menace to society. The demons don't want him in the 10 cities, they don't want him in the capitalists. But the capitalist is where he need to be. They don't want him in Mississippi. But Mississippi is where it needs to be. There's a great effectual door open unto me. And there are many adversaries. Great door open, many adversaries. And this is not the time to be frustrated or scared. This is not the time to, to, to run and hide. No, 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 no. Great door open, effectual. Great door and effectual is open unto me because there's great effects coming with this door. But I know that there are many adversaries standing in the way to block, standing in the way to hinder, standing in the way to overthrow, standing in the way to make it non-effect. And this is where you, the people of God, we need your assistance. How do we get your assistance? by praying, by standing on the wall with us, by fasting with us, by, yeah, by, 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 by coming, bringing your presence and praying for us, and saturating the ground, saturating the place. Notice the lesson. Now, if Timotheus come, Timotheus, Timotheus. Now, if Timotheus come, see that he may be with you without fear. 
See that he may be with, with you without fear. It is so important that when people go certain places, that you make sure those persons are protected so that they don't have to go through that with fear. You have to know, you have to learn how to deal with those persons. Now, if Timotheus come, if Timotheus come, see that he may be with you without fear. He don't need to be exposed to the curses, the voodoo, the yudu, the town hall dances, the clubs, the strip joints, the gambling casinos, the this, the that. Now, if the multi has come, see that he may be with you without fear. Fear can happen in a lot of ways. Fear of losing his life. Fear of backsliding. Fear of doing a whole lot of stuff. And the fear, fear goes a long way. We don't. We got to keep moving, man. My, I didn't know my time was so up. See that he may be with you without fear, for he worketh the work of the Lord as I also do. I like the way Paul said that. For he worketh the work of the Lord as I also do. Wow, Timotheus. Uh huh. And Tim and Paul is not hating on him. Paul is admonishing him. Now, if Timotheus come, see that he may be with you without fear. Protect him, for he worketh the work of the Lord as I also do. Let no man therefore despise him. You, the host, make sure no man despise him. I'm sending him to you there. I'm sending Timotheus. He's doing the work like I'm doing. But make sure no man despise him. They may look at him. They may see how young he is. They may look at him and, and they may rail on him. Let no man despise him. But conduct him forth in peace. And I'm saying this again in a different light. Let no man despise him or her. Whoever the Lord was sent. Whoever the Lord was sent. Let no man despise him or her. But conduct him or her forth in peace that he may come, that they may come unto me. For I look for him with the brethren. I look for them with the brethren. I want them to come forth with that word. I look for them with the brethren. Now, if this right here don't make you shout, I, 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 maybe you're just not the shouting type. But Paul is saying some things because this is ministry. This has had to do with protocol, protecting what God ha has given you and seeing to it that the service of the Most High God is not in violation or have been violated when they come to you. Yeah. That they may come unto me. Let no man despise, therefore despise him, but conduct him forth in peace that he may come unto me for I look for him with the brethren. As touching our brother Apollos, Paul is naming names. As touching our brother Apollos, I desire, I greatly desired him to come unto you with the brethren. I wanted him to come too. Look at this help. Destiny helpers. A list of destiny helpers. Paul have named Timotheus. Now he's naming Apollos. He said, I greatly desire him to come unto you with the brethren. Who are the brethren? He doesn't even go into listing all of the brethren. But there are many others that are coming. There are many others. What did he say? That's right. I, I said it, uh, Jennifer Harris. Uh, there are many others that are coming. Coming where? You didn't hear about Mississippi? You didn't hear about March 18th, 19th, and 20th? Where were you? Why are you hiding? Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. Hear what's getting ready to go down. March 18th, 19th, and 20th. It's all, it's been posted. You might want to repost that again. You might want to repost it again. Uh-huh. And I'm sorry. I do apologize. I do not have, I have a banner that I normally just put up. And I did, yeah, anyway. We're going to get it back up there. I've got to, I got to get back in tune. As touching our brother, Paulus, I greatly desire him to come before you with the brethren. But this will, this will, but his will, I'm sorry, but his will was not at all to come at this time. So now, when you read this, you'll think Paul is trying to kick Brother Paulus under the bus if you're not if you're not wise. 
if you're not reading this carefully, if you're not listening to him carefully. But Paul is not kicking Apollos under the bus. Notice that word again. Because you see, some, we get so finicky. If we don't say it just right, the thing touches deep and we're hurt for nothing. He didn't say that right. As touching our brother Paulus, I greatly desired him to come unto you with the brethren. But his will was not at all to come at this time. Hmm? You can take that wrong. It was not at all to come at this time. But read on. But he will come when he shall have convenient time. Hear the conclusion of the whole matter. That's it. Hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Don't be so quick to cut someone off. Hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Hear the whole matter. Don't let the devil ruin people. God placed good people in your life. And then all of a sudden, because you didn't hear the conclusion of the whole matter, you're ready to rail on them. I just knew this was that. I just felt that in my spirit. I just felt it wasn't right. What wasn't right? Do you know them like that? No. But I just felt it right. wasn't right. It just didn't. No, 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 no. Here's the conclusion of the whole matter. The woman of God says, March 18th through the 20th, birthing and awakening, conference, Biloxi, Mississippi, registered by cash app. That's right. Why, why the registration? Why the registration? The registration is because people will fool you. We've had a registration. Let me throw this in there. We had a registration that I was uh, putting on a, a conference. It's a prayer conference. And uh, dynamic teacher. And uh, put it on. And, and we, we went through. Um, we went through. Uh, I forgot the name of the, uh, the, the thing that we used. But it's a social media, it's, it's, a, it's a platform that you can go through and register. We used it, and it showed that we had almost 500 people coming to the conference. Why? Because our registration was free. <laughs> our registration was free, woman of God. And because we did a free conference, over five, 600 people signed up. We just knew, okay, okay, that's way too big. We, we, only, uh, we were only focusing on maybe 100 at the most. And uh, and so the 500, that was just going to be too much. And so we scaled back some and closed it out. But in my spirit, in my spirit, something wasn't right. I didn't know then what I know now, but in my spirit, something just wasn't right. Look at it. Double check it. I'm not the control of that, but just, this, uh, 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, bright, something bright, somethingbright.com. Um, anyway, we had to go there to to, to, to sign up. Every, e, even bright, even bright. Is that even bright? Evenbright.com. Yeah. So we went there to sign up, and we had all these people because we were doing free registration. But when you sign up, and then they have to sign up with money, <laughs> and you're gonna see the right registration fee, right? Why? Because if they sign up and they pay a fee, uh, most of the time they're gonna come. But when they don't say, when they don't put no money, they're like, man, we just juice it up, just whatever. But when they when they sign up and they register, then they give the person, the host, a feel of who's gonna be there. And the, whatever size building, whatever they need to do what they need to do with, they have something to work with. And Paul said that don't start gathering when I get there. You do all this in advance. Notice what he said. That uh uh Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered them, him, that there be no gathering when I come. Why are you trying to take care of the building now, now that I'm here? You have all that taken care of before we get there, before I get there. You see, and, and all he's talking about is protocol. And that's the same thing here. Protocol. Protocol. Take care of them before they get there. As touching our brother Apollos, I desire I greatly desire him to come unto you with the brethren. But his will was not at all to come at this time. But he will come when he when he shall have convenient time. Convenient time. Convenient time. And so the woman of God put the registration up there. Go ahead and register. Go ahead and register. It's only $20. That's not much. Because when you put $20, if you can't come, you're just telling us, hey, keep the $20 and be blessed. That's my offering. Keep the twenty dollars and be blessed. Well, I don't want it back. I don't want it back. Now this is for the work of the Lord. Then yes, right. Sow your seed of twenty dollars. You know because it's going.
for somebody's eyes. Somebody's eyes come open because you sow the seed. Somebody's deaf ear is going to come unstopped because you sow the seed. How that's going to happen? How, how an eye is going to open because I sow my seed? Because you're making it possible to secure a place. You're making it possible to help take care of the Lord's people. You're making it possible. You're not paying anybody to preach the gospel. You're not paying anybody to teach the word of God. You're not paying anybody to do the whole thing. What are you doing? Securing a venue, securing an atmosphere, a, 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 an environment, a place where they can come and, and do what they need to do the right way. That's why, and that's why it's, it's needful. It's necessary. You're not throwing money at something that is not going to work, but somebody's going to benefit. And then when you look at it to its lowest common denominator, an eye going to open. And largely because you was able to sow a seed of just registering and uh, able to say, well, okay, we got this many people. We're going to need a larger venue. We got small amount, uh, amount of thing. We need a smaller menu, uh, a venue. And somebody's eye is going to be open because you help assist the work of the Lord. Go back to the top. Go back to the top. What about overall topic? Assisting the work of the Lord began with assisting his servants. Assisting the work of the Lord began with assisting his servants who have a plan. And you're working with the plan is just set the uh, stage right. So we all can help in that area. Excuse me. And the woman of God, uh, 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 pull up a page, pull up my page. Look at it. You'll see it. Uh, the fly is circulating. Look up the woman of God, Margaret Temple Brown. Follow her. You who are here have not heard of her, follow her. Amen. Great things going on. These are uh, overseers and her. And it's a team effort, team ministry. Her and her husband, both overseers. And follow them. See what they're doing. Hear it. Follow them. Follow them. <laughs> Amen. Amen. See what they're doing. All right. And, and they have a ministry. Temple Speaks Ministries. They, they, they're doing big things. And God is putting an effectual door, a great door. God has given them a great door. An effectual door is open unto them. And this is where they need our prayer. They need our support. They need our help. Why? Because, and there are many adversaries. Verse 9 of this year, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9. For a great door and effectual is open unto them. And there are many adversaries. If you want to help, $20 registration is one thing, but help by praying also. Help by praying. Help by fasting. Help by asking God, God, do it. Do it. I'm going to come. Do it. I can't come. Do it. Do it still. Do it, Father. Do it. And just pray. If there was a time to pray, it's now. And uh, he said, but he'll come at a more convenient time. Watch ye. Stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men. Be strong. Let all thing let let all your things be done with charity. Not something. Let all your things be done with charity. Have a charity, a, a heart of charity. Have a heart of love. Yeah. I beseech you, brethren. You know the house of Stephanus, that it is the first fruit of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the God, to the ministry of the saints. They have did what? They have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. My God, when you got somebody who's an addicted to this gospel, addicted to the work of the ministry, addicted to what they're doing for God, addicted. And these people are addicted to Mississippi. <laughs> ah, I got a new word for you, uh, Overseer Brown. Uh huh. You and Timmy Brown. They are addicted to what they're doing. My God, what a good addiction! They're doing it with good addiction. Hallelujah! Addicted. They have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. What? They have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. My God. 
Woman of God said, pray for the conference for life to be changed. Amen. That ye submit yourselves unto such and to everyone that helpeth with us and laboreth. Listen, just a few more verses and I'm going to be out of the way. Being blessed by destiny helpers are more than you can ever imagine. Being blessed, being blessed by destiny helpers are more than you can ever imagine. I am glad of the coming of Stephanus and of Fortunus and Achaeus for that which was lacking on your part they have supplied. Sometimes you're going to look for people to do a certain thing they fall through. They don't come through. You're looking for this person to come. You're looking for that person to do this. You're looking for that place right there. This house, that place, that people, that group. You look for them to come and, and, and show up and just be in the place. And sometimes it don't happen. But then it look like there are three people. Three people. Paul says, I am glad of the coming of Stephanus and Fortunus and Achaeus. And a chick, you know his name. You can read it for yourself. <laughs> My tongue getting twisted. For that which was lacking on your part, they have supplied. When you could not muster, they did it. When you could not come through, they did it. I was so glad that they came through. Paul is saying that because he know people. I was glad these three came through. Yes, we set the stage for F number of people. A huge number of people right here. 300, 400 people. We've set the stage for 400. But 40 showed up. Still, Paul says, I'm glad for Stephanus, Fontanus, and Achicotus. Yeah, yeah, anyway. <laughs> uh, for that which was lacking on your part, they have supplied. And I had the name, I've said it, I've said it, but some of these names get a little twisted here or there. And I'm sorry that I do not speak that every day. But they have refreshed my spirit. Notice he said, Paul says, for they have refreshed my spirit and yours to be in a place when you're often given out, given out and given out and to have these men and women to come back and refresh your spirit. Say, but they have refreshed my spirit and yours. Therefore, acknowledge them that are such. Acknowledge them. When you got people in your corner that want to refresh you in the spirit, in the realm of the spirit, and Mississippi is going to be such a place. Yes, there's going to be some church. Yes, there's going to be some uh, uh, um, Bible, uh, 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 some teaching. Yes, there's going to be a conference. Yes, but it's also a time to just get out and be refreshed. Oh, y'all don't hear me. <laughs> y'all don't hear me. It's going to be some refreshing going on. So for that which was lacking on your part, they supplied. But they have refreshed my spirit and yours. Therefore, acknowledge them that are such. For the churches of Asia salute you. Then it said Aquila and Priscilla salute you much in the Lord. And we talked about Aquila and Priscilla. That team, that dynamic team as the Browns, dynamic team, Timmy and Margaret, dynamic team, dual, overseers. Paul says, notice what Paul says, the churches of Asia salute you. Aquila and Priscilla salute you much in the Lord with the church that is in their house. This people love God so much they have a church in their house. Now, that's most effective to God. Why is it effective to God? God just wants you to win souls. He just wants you to be about his business. He wants you to reach those that are lost. Aquila and Priscilla are people who are articulate. They love God. And, and, and there's great, they walk in protocol. There's a professionalism about them. And they hold the service in their home. They, they're doing the best they could with what they got. Why? Because they are addicted to the work of the ministry, to the work of the saints, seeing that the people of God walk in excellence. And they're not hungry. They're not crying out, what about me, Lord? What about me? I want this Lexus. I want this car. I want this another mule and a wagon. Father, if you just grant me with two more mules and wagons. They're not worried about all that. 
They're just addicted to be people who would love God. My time is up. I got to quit. I've got to uh, I'll finish it. It says uh, they have a church that is in their house. All the brethren greet you. Greet you one another with the holy kiss. Don't violate a holy kiss. People have violated the holy kiss. They, they, they took the holy out of kisses now. Catherine Brown, they've taken the holy out of kisses. The kisses now that they give, they're not, they're not holy. They're lustful. But at that time, all the saints greet you. Greet you one another with an holy kiss. Nowadays, people don't want you kissing them, kissing on them. They coming out of church and they greet you. And you kiss them and they, they, they mess around and slap you. Um, God forbid. Because they don't know. that they, they have not been taught. And we need we need to get back to this. And first time you start hearing about a holy kiss is in the word of God. Greet you one another with the holy kiss. Not a lustful, seductive, sexual kiss. The devil is a liar. Greet you one another with the holy kiss. And that we have to talk about that one other day, another day. The salutation of me, Paul, with my own hands. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be an, an anathema, maranatha. Now we'll talk about that. I'll talk a little bit more about that tomorrow, Lord's willing. Lord's willing. If I don't, yeah, the Lord be my helper. We'll talk about that tomorrow. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. My love be with you. You all in the in Christ Jesus. My love be with you all in Christ Jesus. Amen. And this is our lesson for today. We thank God for it. God blessings to all of you. Amen. The woman of God said, don't violate the kisses. Amen. Don't violate the kisses. <laughs> I like that. Don't violate the kisses. My time is up. I've got to go, but I appreciate you being with us. We'll be back tonight for prayer. And um, love coming. Father, we thank you for what you've done for us. And thank you for opening this door for us again. It's a great door, an effectual door uh, of ministry. So, Father, we thank you for this opportunity. Let your glory be revealed. Let your mystery be made known. And, Father, we pray now that soul will be saved. Soul will be saved there in Mississippi. Soul will be saved. That God, this will be not only be a time for Mississippi, but the burning that would take place. The burning, the fire set that would take place there in this great state of Mississippi. Father, let it also, oh go, God, transcend to a global revival. Not in just one place, but all over the place. Oh God, in all over, all throughout America, all throughout the islands of the sea. All of all throughout the nations of the world, other continents, God, let just a, a wildfire break out that is uncontrollable. Let it travel to every continent under the sun, every city, every hamlet, every village, every bush, every trench, every ditch, every wartime situation, God, in every place. Father, let this gospel go forth like wildfire and let us go to Mississippi as fire starters in Jesus mighty name. Father, anoint us to be fire starters. Let it be that purpose to start fire, to set a blaze, to set it on fire, to ignite revivals everywhere. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. God bless you. God keep you. Never smile upon you. My time is up. Arena, I thank God for you, woman of God. So good to see you one more again. Be blessed. Go in the strength of the Lord. All of you, the Lord's people.